What's going on, y'all? It's JD Pakel. Today on the hard count is Texas Tech, a dark horse to win the Big 12 Conference. We will discuss. Welcome into CFB with JD, the people's channel for every single thing that you know and love about college football. Happens on this YouTube channel nearly every single day. We'd love to have you subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. We do a lot of things on that channel uh, that we also move over to this channel. We, we do polls, we do videos, we do open-ended questions. That's a great medium for y'all to help us drive this show. Now, Armstrong, Sims, and Jack McKenzie, they do the real heavy lifting behind this whole operation. So Texas Tech is a fascinating case study to me in the Big 12 Conference for a number of reasons, which we're going to get into. But if you've been tracking with the way the Big 12 has been all over the place in the last few months. You've been talking about Oklahoma getting a new coach, TCU getting a new coach, Texas getting Quinn Ewers. Like, there's been a number of storylines that have popped up that have made you look at this conference, but Texas Tech just seems to sort of trend right along and trend in an upwards direction so far this offseason. They won seven games a year ago. They got their coach fired. I say they got their coach fired. They chose to fire their coach when they were in position to make a bowl game during that season. So it tells me the administration cares a lot about football and they want to revamp this thing and have it headed to the direction where they can win the conference and play for really exciting bowl games. No knock against Mississippi State in their bowl game, but Texas Tech, they were supposed to get skull drug in that game. Like they were 10 and a half point underdogs. All they did was just take them to the woodshed and, and make a statement to the rest of the country. So I think Texas Tech actually has a very interesting and, don't get me wrong, multivariable scenario where they can compete for the conference title. So let's just break that down quite a, quite a bit. Uh, first and foremost, they already have a lot of talent. Like that's the thing with programs where you see coaches get fired or they're not successful it's a culture thing or it's a talent thing. I don't think Texas Tech is hurting badly in either department, but especially on the talent front, you've got a lot of things that are going to allow you to be successful next year as they continue to mature and get under the right leadership and structure. But you've got Sir Roderick Thompson, who is a bell cow, who has flashed multiple times. And if he gets a steady dose of the football and is able to stay healthy and be the lead back, He's as good as a lot of guys in this conference, especially with uh, how much I think he will see the football next season. He could be an all-conference kind of player. Maybe it's a hot take. Maybe we'll come back here in a year from now and say, wow, that was a great take. I love Sir Roderick Thompson. I love what I saw from him in the bowl game. Quarterback. That's another piece that you see with teams that are struggling. The quarterback's not very good. For my money, Texas Tech has two pretty good ones. Tyler Show, the Oregon transfer, decided to come back after a frustrating season last year where he, I believe he broke his collarbone, wasn't able to come back, looked like maybe Texas Tech's chances for a respectable season were lost. And then Donovan Smith, the redshirt freshman a season ago, steps in. He's like 6'5", 230. He looked like a seasoned veteran out there in the bowl game against Mississippi State. Had total command of the offense, was throwing great strikes, could hurt you with his feet. There's a lot of things to like about both of these quarterbacks, and you just got to pick one of them. You get the right guy running your offense, this could be a really fun team to watch. If they can carry over what they did in that bowl game offensively, they're going to have a chance to be really good. Now, the defense is something to keep an eye on. You lose Rico Jeffers, the leader of your defense, the heart and soul, the captain. You lose him to the NFL. Can you replace that? Do you have enough leadership at coaching positions to make sure your guys are confident and comfortable in that scheme? For my money, I, th I think that's something that's going to be sort of the hinge section of this team that will keep them from getting to where they want to go or propel them to where they want to go. That's where my interest lies in the 2022 season is the defensive side of things because the offensive side of the ball has a lot of horses that can run. Also, this schedule slash conference is workable this season. Okay, they got home games that are pretty favorable opponents. Uh, they got Baylor at home, they got Oklahoma at home. So not favorable opponents, but if you had to draw straws for who you wanted to have come play you at your place, it's probably Baylor, the defending Big 12 champions, and then Oklahoma, who has run the conference for the better part of the last five years. Now, you have to go to Stillwater to play Oklahoma State. You have a tricky non-conference game in NC State that's going to be on the road. That'll tell us a lot. Honestly, both those games will tell us quite a bit. NC State very early in the season for Texas Tech. But I do really love they get both those big games in Baylor and Oklahoma 
at home. That could be the difference in those games. When you're playing at home against a really formidable opponent, the crowd noise makes a big difference. The bounce of the ball just falls a little bit differently at home. I can't prove it. There's no science behind it, but your team is likely to play better at home. And this is the piece that is, I think, perhaps, I don't want to say most important, but second most important. There's a lot of things being shuffled around in the Big 12 Conference, like we mentioned to start this video. Iowa State, they lose a ton. We thought they were going to potentially compete for the conference title a year ago. Oklahoma, new quarterback, new head coach. I think those are great gets for Oklahoma, but they haven't done anything in Norman yet. They haven't done anything on the field yet to give us uh, too much confidence in them in Norman. I think they probably should feel good, but you, you get what I'm saying. It's, it's going to be a fresh start for them. Baylor, conference champions. For my money, one of the best head coaches in the country. They still have to replace a really star-studded backfield and Abram Smith, he's gone. Might have a quarterback derby. The defense, you lose a lot of really generational talents. I'll say it, generational talents, because that's what Jalen Petrie was to this team. Terrell Bernard, your leader on defense. They have stuff to replace. New defensive coordinator at Oklahoma State, and that was their calling card a year ago. If they don't have a defense as good as they did last year, they don't play for the conference. Uh, they don't win a New Year's Six Bowl. So you see what I'm saying? There's so many things that you can't for sure with 100% certainty say are going to be the same as they were last year to where I think that plays favor for Texas Tech. And in the same token, the way that you can't put 100% certainty on the things that these teams did last year, I think that X factor translates in favor of Texas Tech. To sum that all up, I think Texas Tech has some things in spades that we just can't really quantify. That kind of sounds like a cop-out. That kind of sounds like analyst speaks. I get it, but just roll with me here. Having been able to be around Joey McGuire in his time in Waco, that man is someone that creates juice and he creates buy-in, both of things that you can't put a win total on. I can tell you one thing, you can't win a football game without it. If you don't have your troops bought in and ready to go, go to war for you, you can't win a football game without that. And Joey McGuire, if you know anything about him, he's going to create buy-in. He's going to create a buzz he already has around this program. That's going to translate to more wins. It just will. How many? We don't know, but it will. Also, a big thing for him that he took from his time here with Matt Rule, the brand. The brand for them is the toughest, most competitive, hardest working team in the country. I may have shuffled the order there, but those three things are what he is going to make sure he embodies to the best of his ability and instills to the best of his ability on this program. And so, you again, you can't quantify these things. You can't put a number value to these things and say, okay, they have the hardest working team in the country. They'll win eight games. You can't do that. But I'll tell you one thing. I wouldn't bet against him. I wouldn't bet against this staff. I wouldn't bet against the talent they already have. To sum it all up, to put a bow on this thing, there's a lot of horses, a lot of talent, a lot of things to be excited about at Texas Tech, regardless of who your head coach is. You hit a home run. You hit a home run in your hire and in your structure and in your culture and pair those things together. You could be really dangerous in this conference. A lot of things going on in the conference right now. A lot of uncertainty in this conference right now. The door might be propped open just a little bit. Excited to see what Texas Tech does. Again, I wouldn't bet against them to not kick it down. That's it for us here on The Hard Count. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter, at JD Piquel, to stay up to date with things we're doing on the channel, to contribute to content we do on the channel. Would love to have you along for the ride. We will keep this party rolling. We will see y'all next time.